around now, we have actually almost every modern Diablo variant in the showroom. We also have a very, very cool Lamborghini that just arrived, probably the most rare of all the specific models that was ever built. Very cool to be getting caught up uh, back at the showroom in Miami, no events going on right now. Not until probably August or so, we'll head out to Pebble Beach. Great time to give you guys a little bit of a showroom tour uh, while we have a lot moving uh, inside the showroom, especially when it comes to vintage Lamborghinis. Uh, we, we've talked about this car numerous times. Uh, I actually, in one video, I said, we're gonna try to buy it back. Uh, and we did, we recently sold this. This is a Paris Auto Show car. Um, one of my favorite Diablo examples in the world. We've talked about this car here. It's gonna be very emotional to see this car go. This is a car that I chased for years and years and years. Um, we had the opportunity to buy it. We've actually done a video about this. There's been a great story on VinWiki about this car. This is the only Diablo SV uh, produced for the US in Giallo Perlato. I believe it's the only produced in the world in this color. But what makes this car so special on top of that was one of the original Monterey Edition Diablos. The color is just so unique. And then the history of the car. This is a one owner car, about 918 original miles, completely original, original tires and such. I chased this car for years. And we just sold this to a very passionate family. Uh, they've got some great Diablos, a 6.0, a few other cars. We sold it a few years ago, and then the partners, we actually bought it back to put away. We had a ton of interest around Diablos lately, and this is one of them that a lot of people ask me about. This just came in, uh, another SV variant. If you don't know, SVRs were actually built on the same production line. Same basically chassis, uh, basically a Diablo SV that's been stripped. This is one of the SVRs that we've owned. Not to be confused, there's actually another identical car in this color. Uh, this car is a Rancio Ishtar. Um, so it's like a it's like a flat orange. We actually have an Arancio Ishtar GTR here that we recently sold. And this car has been in Japan for many years. This is car number 11 of the 32 Diablo SVRs produced for the world. Um, these were all numbered cars. We have some actually some cool historic photos of this car as well. This is not correct. Uh, these grills here, you can see these are not correct. Uh, but the air jack system, uh, these here, this aerodynamics correct. The exhaust is incorrect. Um, the script is correct, pretty rare to see that. That only came on Diablo SVRs. This is fresh inventory. Um, we sold this car like eight or nine years ago. I'm gonna argue that this might be one of the best 1988 Countach is left in the world. This is 1,200 original miles, original Bianco Polo white paint, complete white original interior, and original P7R tires. You know, we, we sometimes get made fun of, uh, like, oh, why didn't this person drive this car or use this car? But this is really a blueprint um, of just originality, and it's nice to see that these cars still exist understand you know all of the original pieces of of a 1988 and a half Countach. this car has not been modified it still has its us bumpers and things like that so very very cool to to, to have this car as inventory right now and then another car that's sort of misunderstood here is the 99 diablo vt coupe it, it's actually a perfect moment to have this car here in front of a Diablo 6.0, because the 6.0 is the evolution of basically what Lamborghini did in 1999. So in 1999, you have the updated dash, you have the updated headlights, you have a few other updated things. They had this rear grill with the different badgings. Uh, this car was originally delivered new to Japan. It's a Japanese spec car. If you don't know, I didn't even know this, and I, I recently did the research through the International Lamborghini Registry, only 40, Four, 44, 99 Diablo VT Coupes were made for the world. Most of them were actually built for the US, but this fantastic original car, super fly yellow on black interior, yellow piping, yellow stitching, uh, and very, very rare. It's interesting because the 99 VT Coupes, there's some unique differences. They had the updated dash, but they had seats 
a little bit similar to the older Diablo VT coupes. That was specific for Euro cars. Another thing that was specific for Euro cars was the front bumper. If you look, this is similar to like a 95, 96 VT front bumper. That came on all the Euro cars, rest of the world cars. US cars actually had a different front bumper like a Diablo VT Roadster. And the, the seats were different on the US cars. So a lot of unique features. These are funky cars. Really, really cool to see. This, this is a fantastic example. Uh, you'll notice the calipers are actually wrong. Um, all Diablo calipers came in black. We will correct that. Um, but this is a cool car and rare to see in general. This is then the further evolution once Volkswagen Audi Group bought Lamborghini uh, in late 1997. Obviously, that was the first update. And then the massive update, obviously, on the Diablo 6.0 where you have, you know, the, the rear tail lights are different, the bezel, the rear grille. Uh, the styling of the rear hood is the same, obviously a 6.0, if you open that up, it's bare carbon fiber. Um, the wheels are different, the front fenders are different, they're carbon, and they're actually wider if you look. Uh, so you can see the, the body line when you shut the door. Um, those are magnesium wheels as well, which was the big update. And then on the interior, you see the biggest update of the 6.0. This is a great car. This is one of four in Rosso Vic, which the color was named after Vic Kalunian. A beautiful metallic red that just photographs so pretty. Um, what's cool about this car, it's one of the very few with Alcantara Dash. Uh, this has the original beautiful cream color interior with the red piping and red stitching. And you'll see with the 6.0, the steering wheel was different. The shift knob, the shift gate area is different. All of the AC controls were updated with the 6.0. Uh, and then the entire center console is different on the 6.0 versus the 99 coupe. So that's also a big difference. Uh, and you'll see the seats are different because they actually are adjustable seat, um, which normal Diablos or all other Diablos are a bucket seat. So the 6.0 was the only Diablo example that got the uh, adjustable uh, rear back on the seat. Look, another cool part about 6.0 is, is you can actually see the bare carbon fiber here under the front hood. Um, this is actually cool to note. This is the original factory Diablo car cover that came in the later years in yellow. Those were on 6.0s and GTs, I believe. This is another car that we just sold. We have to talk about this. This car came up for auction a few years ago. It's the only Bianco Perlato Countach ever made with a full blue interior. This has a blue shift knob, a blue steering wheel, a blue full dash, and it has 91 original miles. Uh, this is joining a great collection in the US of some fantastic hypercars and supercars. This car is absolutely stunning. The color combination is great um, and, and very cool to see with such low miles. So we recently sold this. And then we've got to walk over to another car that we recently sold. And it sort of fills in the, the Diablo, uh, all of the variants. So Diablo GTR, one of 30 for the world. This was essentially the track version of the Diablo GT. And one of the biggest differences when you look at a GT, which we have, uh, I think, four here right now, when you look at a GT versus a GTR, is all of the bare carbon fiber components are actually matte carbon fiber. So you've got the matte carbon fiber rear wing, the uh, tail light bezels, you have your air jack system. They've removed the rear bumper on the GTR. And then when you open the hood on the GTR, you can see bare carbon, bare carbon. Um, and, then, and then obviously you've got the Lexan windows. Uh, you've got the latches here on the front hood and rear hood. Uh, which were not standard, um, and then obviously different oil cooler. The interior is slightly different, different wheels, uh, center lock wheels. Brakes have been upgraded. Um, not that different from a GT. This is pretty much a GT that's been stripped down, uh, but very cool to have here. What's great about this car, it's been fully restored. It's basically like jewelry, um, and this is one of two that were ever finished on a Rancio Ishtar. So beautiful color. Um, again, like the SVR, it's a non-metallic orange. Uh, 
cool, cool color for this car. And again, on the GTR, all of the interior pieces, if you look, are matte carbon. Um, so very cool. We've talked about the GT2. Uh, this here is one of my favorites, the CLK DTM. We've actually owned this car before. Uh, many years ago when we first opened, we purchased this car from a collector out of Wellington, Florida. He had a massive collection, CLK GTR, Ferrari FXX, Porsche 959, some really fantastic cars. I believe we bought his Carrera GT, SLS Black Series, and a few other cars. And, and this was uh, a 3,000 mile, one of the 100 uh, built for the world. I don't know if we've ever done uh, a, a full video on the DTM, but I think it's something we have to, uh, just because these cars are really so misunderstood. Uh, you know, 100 for the world, produced by HWA, uh, which as you guys know, um, basically Mercedes uh, racing division uh, that also built the CLK GTR, carbon, carbon body car, uh, just, I could go on and on and on. 3,000 mile car, so it's it's sort of an honor to be representing that car as well. You see the Diablo GT, we've, we've done a, a bunch of content about that. And I think next we gotta take you guys into the shop to show you a very special Lamborghini model that just came in. So this we are standing with is probably the most rare Lamborghini specific model that was ever produced outside of a prototype or anything like that. And, and these are just so cool. This is the Lamborghini silhouette. Now this is one of 54 examples that were produced for the world. This car was first launched in 1976 at the Geneva Auto Show. And this car is in, in so many ways, it, it's, it, it tells such a great story. Uh, to Lamborghini's history. And one of those facts, I actually just realized um, we had a, a passionate Lamborghini collector here uh, from Norway who we're, we're gonna have to feature at some point uh, on the channel. And what he, he basically made notice to me is the design of this silhouette, the design of these wheels. Um, first made famous on the Lamborghini Bravo, which was designed by the late, great Marcello Gandini. Um, as you guys know, Marcello, uh, recently uh, passed and and really the Lamborghini world owes and, and the design world, the supercar world owes a massive gratitude towards the designs he created. I mean, really in many ways changing the automotive world forever. Um, and I look at his designs as art. He designed many, many important cars uh, for Boton and uh, obviously uh, for Lamborghini. And, and if you look at the design, you look at these wheels, you look at the rear wheel and you look at these flares, this really was the inspiration for those first Lamborghini Countach 400S cars uh, that were built by Walter Wolf and Lamborghini. And, and really, you know, this was built and launched at a time when the Periscopio first came out. So if you're a Countach nerd, you know the Countach Periscopio came with small wheels, no fender flares. It was just a very clean design. Uh, and this, you really see the design language of Lamborghini. You see the design language of the Countach in the silhouette for the first time. Uh, and you see these wheels that became a, an important part of, of Lamborghini history, those, those very iconic wheels. But when you think of a Lamborghini silhouette that maybe sells between 300 and 400,000, uh, and you think of its rarity and its place in the world, silhouette was the first of its kind, two seat, uh, open roof, mid-engine, and, and obviously a, a smaller power plant. This is a V8. This was obviously the inspiration for the Yalpa. Uh, this was the inspiration for mid-sized Lamborghinis. But in terms of its design, it's the first of its kind like this. Um, and we've got to do a ton more content on these cars because they're so unique. You never get to see them. Imagine this is the third example I've ever seen in my life. Behind us, um, we've got another great uh, 560 SEC six liter wide body we just purchased. We've got to do a bunch of little things to this car. It was in Asia, but it's an original six liter with the four cam, famous hammer engine that was put in the SEC. So we're gonna do a bunch of work to this car, but you could see there's the massive <laughs> cylinder heads uh, that came on the four cam cars. We're working on it now, and this will be a fantastic example. Another Diablo GT, obviously a, a, another AMG hammer over there. And then 
we have this great project behind us we're working on and you can actually see sort of the, the, the flares and you can see the wheels uh, where, they were, where they got the inspiration. This is a Countach 5000S, mostly original black paint, a low mileage 5000S, side draft carbureted car, 1984 car, spent majority of its life in the US, black, black with the gold wheels. Uh, we've removed the wing. Uh, and this is a, a great preservation car. We're gonna preserve all the paint. We're gonna preserve the original leather interior and we're doing all of the mechanical. So this is a fantastic survivor that we're excited to finish and, and, and one day get to its next home. So we have some great content coming up. Uh, we're gonna do a very cool shoot with both of the original WX3 prototypes, uh, the WX3R prototype sitting behind me, and we're chasing some really, really cool cars. Stay tuned, we have some great behind the scenes uh, videos that are coming very soon.